Welcome to another minute where proof is possible. I'm Corbett Lunsford. Today we're talking about testing and weather. Building forensics can be sensitive to weather, but sometimes it's a good thing. So it's in order that you are not nervous when there is weather going on where you are, let's go ahead and talk about it. First of all, you need to know what kind of a day you want to be able to test on. Now, depending on whether you're doing a comprehensive look at a building or whether you're just doing a blower door test or whatever it is, uh, the weather might make a difference. Some people think that a day like this, when this picture was taken, is not a good day. Uh, there's a myth out there that I'll talk about in a minute. But in fact, you can do this testing any time now because of two things, equipment and training. The training nowadays is better, uh, in some cases, than ever before. And the equipment that we're using uh, for these building forensics is much, much better than it used to be. So this myth that you need some kind of a day that's very, very cold or very hot is totally ridiculous. Uh, on a snowy day, when it is actually precipitating, uh, you can do testing. And here is another class of mine that's doing that Exactly. I've done this kind of testing during a blizzard. And normally, getting home is a much bigger deal than actually getting an accurate reading with your equipment. When it's raining, that can actually be a good thing. So if you're out to look at a building specifically for moisture problems, you might want to pick a day when it's either raining or it rained really hard the day before so that you can see things like this. Uh, and that could be useful. On perfect days, when it's 70 degrees outside and 70 degrees inside, in the first place, there is no reason that you can't do a really good job of a building performance analysis on that day. In the second place, uh, there is always a delta T in a home. And a delta T is, of course, a difference in temperature. So what most people think of when they say you need to have a really cold day or a really hot day is an infrared camera. And of course, the infrared camera is cool and everything, but it is not the most important tool in your kit. So uh, none of the bits of this argument make any sense. You can do a an analysis on a home or on a building on any type of day as long as you have the training and the equipment to do that and you need to know yourself and you need to know your equipment in order to know when that kind of a day does exist. So on a windy day, this is when we get into a little bit of a touchy area. But of, of course, this is the main tool in your kit. First of all, the blower door. Second of all, the blower door is affected by wind. Now you're going to do something called the baseline function generally to account for that wind. And there are rules on how you can use the baseline um, and what kind of a day you would grade it to be based on what you find with that function. But there's something else. The location of this hose, the hose that I'm uh, dropping in this picture is called the reference hose. That's the hose that is gonna serve as the anchor. Whenever you take a uh, pressure measurement in home performance, you're taking it uh, in a certain location with reference to a, uh, another location. So the reference has to stay put. It is your anchor. If the reference starts moving around, that's no good. That means that you're not gonna get an accurate reading because the anchor that you're depending on is moving. So in order to fix this, you might choose one of several ways that are kind of uh, bandied about. And here they are. First of all, on the left here, we've got a uh, straight metal tube. This is called a total pressure probe. This is not gonna do anything for your hose if what you're trying to do is get rid of turbulence and wind effects. Uh, this is exactly the same thing as your hose. It is a tube with one tiny hole in the end of it. If there's any turbulence over that hole, it'll show up back at the beginning of your hose at the manometer. So that's not good. The one in the middle is your static pressure probe, and we use this, of course, for HVAC testing. And that's really good for measuring uh, places where there's turbulence that's different uh, in one place than in a couple places, uh, a couple inches away. And that's what this hose does. This uh, probe has four holes, two on one side, two on the other side of this bullet-shaped head. Uh, and it will account for pressure differences from the beginning of the bullet-shaped head to the end of it. Um, that's not going to help you with wind, which is what I'm going to explain in a minute. The soda bottle on the end there is something that some people use. It's kind of a um, witchcrafty thing. They'll put their hose inside of a soda bottle and drop that outside. And of course, a soda bottle, if you think about it, is exactly the same as the first thing we talked about, which is this metal hose with a hole in it. Uh, if anything happens over the mouth of that bottle, wind-wise, it will affect the reading. So some people will, uh, some people know that, and they will affect this by punching holes in the soda bottle, but now you're using something that does not look professional. So please don't do that. Uh, your client is not gonna love you for it. What you can use is something that is going to um, 
even out the wind guest effects. Now, if you look at this wave pattern, it looks a little bit like sound wave, but if you think about the way that wind works, it's going to buffet the entire side of a house, and then it's going to stop, and then it'll again push really hard. So that's what a windy day is, right? If your hose is on that side of the house, then it'll get buffeted exactly like the house is being. So that's not going to be uh, stopped or evened out by any of the fittings that we talked about, including soda bottles or putting your hose in a manometer case or anything like that. Uh, what you can do, however, is use a tool that is parked in the front of the house. If you think about the way that a car HVAC system works, when I turn on the non-recirculating system, uh, and it brings in fresh air from outside that's conditioned to either be heated or cooled, it has to get into the car, which means that I have to allow air out of the car. And if all the windows are up, there's got to be some kind of a vent system in place, which in fact there are. There are the baffles called exhausters at the back of the car that are allowing air to escape from the car. So in fact, the car is this kind of uh, buffering zone. And when wind hits it, it'll come in a little bit, but not nearly as much as it would into a soda bottle with a bunch of holes punched into it. So you can use, and I have before, you can use your car or truck cabin as a uh, buffering um, tool to help you to even out your pressure measurement readings. And you obviously, you always want to use a long time average on these kind of things when you're using a manometer with this. Uh, by the way, this is not scientifically proven. I have done no million dollar research studies on this. I'm just a guy who really cares about building forensics. So please don't call me from a national laboratory and tell me that I'm full of bull because that's your job. Uh, so I hope that this has helped you. Happy testing. Tune in next time.